That was a costly mistake, wasn't it? Right, hello boys and girls. Uh, we're in Burton now for a little Cockney geezer. Burton on Trent, it's Cockney rhyming slang for paying the rent. So I knew about Burton on Trent long before I knew about um, beer. But we're at the home of beer, Burton on Trent. Even now, brewers, home brewers, commercial brewers, um, will still use the term, we Burtonize our water. And that's by adding uh, a load of water additions. Uh, to get the same water profile. People forget water profile. Now that's a floor malting over there. There's a maltings in, um, where is it? Castleford um, at the moment, which is undergoing uh, severe uh, problems as they use gas to do their, uh, to heat their floor maltings. But in Castleford, a guy walks up and down wearing his wellies and a, um, with a wooden, sort of rake comb. And this is one of the floor, um, sort of floor tiles. So that's the, the maltings. This place here is where the engineering works would have been. This is one of the, like the kilns. That there, that is what would have been used to clean out the hills here. So they'd have paid a boy a penny a, a penny a fortnight or something to do that. All the machinery in here was powered by one engine and then with um, kind of like pulleys and drive shafts going absolutely everywhere. Now, as some of you who watched other recent videos will know, I bought a huge mash tun recently that I'm never going to use anyway. That's going to it's going to our Chris. So this is if you look at the, the scale, the size of the mash tons, somebody would have been charged with shoveling this out. They'd have gone inside and shoveled it out, and the story is by the end of it they'd be almost insane. So they take them back to their house and um, and dump them on the doorstep of their house and say to the, say to the, the good lady wife, um, I hope you've, uh, hope you've not got an anniversary coming up because uh, he's going to be dead for the next three days. It was such a horrible job. And it's thought that, um, that that's the origin of the term brewer's droop. So this is the grain mill, which didn't seem overly, overly large. I mean, this place is, is, it's amazing. You, you look through at some of the stuff in here and then you spot stuff and you think, wow, plate chiller, heat exchanger, exactly the same as we use now. Exactly the same. God, exactly the same. Um, so yeah, I mean, what a uh, sort of, um, what an experience. I never realised this is the Burton Union system and these were fermenters and it was top top cropping yeast and as the CO2 built up there it would push the yeast up and it would go into this vat and this is where they'd harvest the yeast from. In a conical fermenter now you'd draw it off the bottom. So they'd take a fifth of the yeast and use it for the next brew, the rest of it would go off as animal feed or to make Marmite. The Marmite factory just down the road. I mean, as museums go, this really is just absolutely beautiful. You're not allowed up there, that's a shame. Um, so on the outside,
we have this is the headquarters of SIBA SIBA the Society of Independent Brewers and um, you can pay if you're a member of SIBA you can pay to have your brewery up there I notice there isn't there isn't one for Harrison's brewery there we are headquarters of SIBA um, I can't remember where we went after this 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 little air horsey is called JD hello mate all of the other horses are um, down at the Dorset Steam Fair this weekend because it's bank holiday weekend and over there is the that is the brewery now where all your carling comes from so that there is that is a you know a working brewery still over there I've been trying to work out where Pete Brown if you've ever read Hops and Glory where Pete Brown had his particular beer made Hops and Glory if you haven't read it is um Pete Brown's adventure of taking an IPA from Burton to India and the trials and tribulations thereof so all these are <coughs> oh, excuse me working drays it's like an FPV this isn't it through here's the tack room and these are the collars which are still made in Warsaw in West Midlands these are some of the awards that they has won and this is where the horses live at night oh, just beautiful beautiful building and here we have a couple of rescued goats hello guys Now, we just had a guided tour, and he said, do you know how beer was moved around after uh, they ceased using horses? He said, uh, they used a beaver. Where did we go? Oh, it's there. We oh, straight past it. So this is You've probably seen this in a number of the different um, period dramas. They rent it out to film companies, etc. And this used to be how you would tell what time you started and finishing work. Clocking on, clocking off. And I used to have a card. You put it in there, push the lever down. And that would put the time that you come in or went out. And then sometimes if your mate wanted to go to the pub early he'd leave an hour before you so you take two cards out and you'd stamp him out that's a sacking offense i shouldn't admit to have ever done that i never did that actually by the way over there is the um what was the woodwork shop all of these Apparently that is a real um, number plate. You know, it's a valid number plate worth a few bob. And all of these are either working or in the process of being restored to be working. Apparently this is probably the eldest microbrewery. I haven't actually been in here. But he said, when you finish the little tour, go in and have a little look. Wow. Now, this is probably I'm wondering, that's probably about five, six hundred litre. 
might be might be larger. Oh, hang on, does it say on here? Pounds per, I don't know. So, right, so this is a free tiered brewery. So at the top, I think we're allowed up here. Isn't this nice? It's like an adventure, boys and girls. Wow. <coughs> wow, this is, it's not, probably not gonna come out very well on on film. So these are open fermenters, FE1, FE2. Heat exchanger. So we'd have, that's the copper down there. So the mash tun and HLT are probably sort of up here. Let's see if I can, see if we can get up there, shall we? You can't get up there. Yeah. You can't get up there. Oh, well, that's a shame. You still see the free tier system. Oh, so you got, I wonder if they got a core ship up there. It's all turned, everything's turned off now because I think they're getting ready to go home. But, uh, so this little micro, so they call it a micro brewery. I mean, it's a fairly impressive little brewery, isn't it? Fairly impressive. Biggish brewery. So there will somewhere be a grain hoist, I'd have thought for lifting the grain up, going into a mash tun. <coughs> and then from the mash tun out into the copper, then out of the copper, um, going through a heat exchanger. I thought that was up there. I don't know. Should have asked Cliff to show us around, but that's, that's lovely. And to show that I haven't completely lost my geek status. Uh, oh, wow. We didn't come in here either. Oh God, look at that. Now that is impressive. Is harnessed to do the work. This Roby engine, technically called the tandem compound condensing mill engine, is a refinement of that principle. This is how it works. Oh, I think they're getting ready to go home. Water is heated in a large... Oh no, it's part of the demonstration, isn't it? Hang on. Steam. Right, so this is where the water's boiled. Where's the next light going to come on? It's fed to the engine via the main valve. There you go. That's the big red and green wheel with handles. So that's that. The main valve controls how much steam gets into the engine and therefore how fast the engine goes. The steam enters the high pressure cylinder where, as it expands, it pushes a disc called a piston inside the cylinder. The piston is connected to a metal shaft called the piston rod. The steam that has expanded in the high pressure cylinder is then piped to a second cylinder. By the time the steam reaches here, it's cooler and has less energy or pressure, and therefore this cylinder is called the low pressure cylinder. Having a second cylinder that reuses the steam right. makes this engine <clears throat> more efficient. A to show I haven't lost my Rivet counter geeky badge. I was able to identify these Land Rovers. <laughs> Sad. Sad but true. 2A, Series 3. This is a milk float. Our 
our neighbour, Richard, down at the Dorothy Packs, has a milk float that would make a rather good donor of one of those. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? As I said, as far as, uh, as far as museums go, this is pretty brilliant. Even better if you're interested in beer and brewing. It's not a beer museum, it's a brewing museum. So, quick wander around in here before they shut. So this is the woodworking works. Um, where they would make you a crib and when you were a baby if you were born to one of the workers and then they'd also make you a coffin <laughs> so, and the history of canned drinks party seven and uh Here is their, did he say this is 25 barrel? That was built by Cause. Did he say this is, hang on, it's on, let's take a. Might be White Shield. So there you got your, your copper over there your mash tun and then your hot water tank and it looks like a cold water tank I'm not sure I don't really know that much about ruin oh hang on here we go look if you want to if you want to know what all this is then one and two is your hot and cold liquor tanks hey, actually I was right blimey and then a malt silo it's a grain silo uh, malt mill and um, then the mash tun and underback, or Grant, as uh, the Americans call it. So where's the... All right, I need to should really get down and dirty to have a look at that. So there's an underback coming off the mash tun. Um, then a copper over there, a hot back, and then fermenters. Wow. So, all right, so it's, yeah, quite impressive. And doesn't actually take up a huge amount of space in reality. We could get one of these in our place easily if we took the floor out upstairs. So I have a quick run up, show you a couple of the other areas here. It's the sort of place where you can definitely spend a good few hours just walking around like I said we've had, had a little guided tour from Cliff if you come there's either Cliff or uh, I can't remember the woman's name now um, but two superb guides doing the guided tour These are quite interesting. <laughs> Made here, but they're pub seats that you sit in with your legs here, through here. And um, in a circle, betting, you'd have your little coins here. So you'd, on a Saturday afternoon, they'd be in a circle and uh, they'd be watching things like cockfighting and stuff awful thing, cockfighting and badger baiting and dog fighting. But, you know, history. All of these are for drinking beer. Like, exquisite, some of these. And for footy fans, oh yeah. These are your Coopers. And there's um, 
trussing in. I just, if you want to do um, a freeze frame on that, it will tell you this was the end of the apprenticeship. What would happen is they'd be put in a barrel that they made along with all sorts of other shit. It would be sealed, it would be rolled. If they survive, they might get a job maybe. Um, and here, these three are all from the same family. The, um, the founders of biochemistry were in the brewing trade. Um, at some point they realised it wasn't because you hadn't gone to church enough that your beer had gone off. And they thought about things like bacterial infections and things, which of course is what we want in a lambic. But uh, And they realised that proper sanitation <laughs> was probably the way to go. And for football fans, that is the original, the real Carling Cup. And apparently the one, I don't know whether Carling do it anymore or whatever, but that's the, it's valuable anyway. I'm not a football fan. And then... This is a, a mock-up of a 1960s pub in the end of the 1960s. And it was valuable time for beer reds because that was when all beer went to be put into um, keg instead of cask. And you had the campaign for the preservation of real beer or whatever it was called, which is now camera and a campaign for real ale that was the origins of camera and I should have bought some sixpences I could have popped that in there see if I could win out there you are 60s pub did we go down from here All right. I probably haven't done justice to this. Now these mirrors, apparently, they found them covered in dust in, you know, like in the back of an old garage or somewhere. Um, worth an absolute fortune now. And then real little treasure there is that old beer engine. What a beautiful thing. register and what would they be those you might think oh it's water for your dog it's not they're spittoons it's where you'd spit your chewing tobacco which sadly I knew what they were <laughs> very sadly I knew what they were
So I haven't really done it justice in this short little video, not quite so short little video. But that's the National Brewing Museum here in Burton-on-Trent. And you get some vouchers for uh, some tasters in the little bar that they've got here. Uh, which I've swapped for a couple of bottles of beer. But it's a fascinating place. If you're into the history of brewing, the two things I guess you should really do. The first is probably to buy Pete Brown's book, Hops and Glory. I cannot highly recommend that enough. It really is a superb uh, historical tome and a really just incredibly funny laugh out loud book. And finally, that is the last surviving cast iron urinal. <laughs> Which they say, feel free to have a look at it, but please don't use it. I hope you've enjoyed that. If uh, you ever get the opportunity, do please come and pay a little visit here. It's cheap as chips. It's about £12.50 to get in and you get your beer tokens as well. And uh, I mean, the kids would love the animals and then your geeks would love the cars and the engineering your beer heads, obviously. They do corporate events and all sorts here. But for now, from the um, National Brewery Museum in Stoke-on-Trent, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.